this is Alexa. I am making this video to share my story all about having Asperger's. Like, how I got diagnosed, how I managed to live with it, how I overcame it, and stuff like that. I'm hoping you'll learn something from the story I'm about to tell you. And please, no hate. I'm hoping not to get a lot of hate on this, so please, be nice. Let's get into the story. So, I was about two years old when I started behaving in an odd, worrying manner. I was not looking anyone in the eye. I was running all over the place. I was screaming all the time. I was playing with random objects such as women's jewelry, which caused me to ruin some of those women's jewelry. And I would have these long, horrible tantrums when something bothered me such as noise. I have always been extremely high functioning though. I wasn't trying to be a bad child. My parents noticed that there was something wrong so they took me to a pediatrician. The pediatrician diagnosed me with Asperger's syndrome. If you don't know what Asperger's is, it is a syndrome on the autism spectrum where you are high functioning but you have a hard time communicating, like making eye contact and basic social skills. And you have behavioral issues such as meltdowns and sensory needs. My parents decided to take me to a behavioral aid in order for them to get me on the right track. My behavioral aid really helped me a lot. I'm actually verbal because of him. However, it took me three years to learn how to talk. When I was as young as two to three years old, I was only saying one or two word phrases. That's it. I was high functioning, but I couldn't talk well at all. For that reason, I was put in special ed for preschool. And they also gave me an IEP, short for an individual education plan. For those of you who don't know what special ed is, special education is a program at the majority of schools where they put kids with special needs in a class where there are way less kids than in a typical class. And not only do the child's classmates also have special needs, but the teachers in the class are actually trained to teach children with special needs and cater to their needs as well. And the kids get accommodations such as leaving class early, extra time, extra help, and things like that. For example, in my elementary school, the typical preschool classes had 20 children in them, but my preschool class only had 8 kids in it, including me. Special Ed also offers therapy services such as speech therapy, also known as speech, occupational therapy, OT, and physical therapy, PT, but unfortunately, they make you miss class a few times a week to get those therapies. When I was in preschool, as I couldn't talk well at all, I had to go to speech twice a week, while I only had to go to OT and PT once a week. In addition to having an IEP, they also gave me a paraprofessional, also known as a one-on-one -on -one aide. My aide was there with me because I needed tons of extra help. And despite the fact that she was really helpful, having her with me all day made me stand out among the other kids, which has always embarrassed me. I have always been teased by other kids for having an aid, most of them being typical children without special needs. I attended special ed preschool for two years while still learning how to talk. By the end of preschool, I was finally speaking properly. I did well being in special ed for two years, but my parents felt that I was way too high functioning and smart for special ed. So they decided to mainstream me for kindergarten. When you mainstream a special needs child, it means that the child will be put in a typical class with typical children rather than a class for children with special needs. For kindergarten through fifth grade, Unlike the small special ed class I was in for preschool, I was put in a typical class with 20 children and two teachers. My assistant teacher would always try to help me. All of them did, actually. It happened every year. 
All of my assistant teachers have given me special attention to try to help me. Even though I was mainstreamed most of the day, I still had to go to special ed for language arts and math. And I still had speech, OT, and PT a few times a week. I also still had an aid, but I was given different aids throughout the years. I had my first aid all throughout preschool, and then I got a new one for kindergarten. And then I got a different one after that. And she was my aide until she passed away when I was in fourth grade. May she rest in peace. And then they gave me a new aide who was my aide from then until I graduated middle school. And then I moved to a different district that gave me a new aide every year until they decided to get rid of the aide my senior year. Due to having Asperger's, I get upset when things change. For example, it really upset me when my family moved five years ago. I had a really bad meltdown all night when my parents told me we were moving. Even though I'm almost 19, I still have meltdowns. Even though children usually grow out of temper tantrums after a certain age, people with Asperger's never grow out of meltdowns. I also have sensory issues. An example of that is playing on desk chairs or swinging on swings while listening to music and fiddling with certain objects in my hands whether it would be a stress ball or something else. My Asperger's also makes it so I get left out, sometimes bullied. This mostly happened to me when I was mainstream. When I was in elementary school, none of the kids would play with me because they thought I was weird. They just weren't understanding of my Asperger's, so they considered me the weird girl in my grade. Nobody would play with me during recess, and every time I would ask a child if I could play with them, they would either tell me that they didn't like me or to go away, which made me feel extremely sad and left out. The only kids that would play with me were the ones who had special needs like me. I've never had a play date with a typical child. Once I reached middle school, that's when I started to make neurotypical friends. However, they were not true friends. They not only never invited me anywhere and left me out, but they also bullied me. They treated me like a slave rather than a friend. Even in high school, I had a ton of fake friends. When you have Asperger's, it's way easier to find fake friends than true friends. Then I entered college. I didn't do well in my first few weeks of college. I tried my best, and I mean my absolute best but it still wasn't enough. My professors taught me in a way that people like me couldn't understand. My parents realized that college is not for people like me. So they took me out and looked for another school for me. They eventually found me a technical school just for people on the autism spectrum. It was the perfect school for me. I was surrounded by people who are understanding and unlike in college, I did really well at this school, and I am one of the top students. I got a certification in computer science, which is amazing despite having Asperger's. People say I'm extremely smart and intelligent, and I embrace that. I also have an unbelievable memory, and I can remember everything, including small things that happened years ago. Even though having Asperger's can be a problem, Having Asperger's can also be a gift. I am gifted because I am good at a lot of things, mainly 3D modeling and animation. I have made so many great friends at my current school, all on the autism spectrum, and they are some of the greatest people I've ever met, and we all enjoy each other's company. With the friends I have now, I am no longer getting left out or bullied. My social skills are improving too, with the help of my friends and family. I wouldn't give up my Asperger's for the world. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed hearing my story about having Asperger's. If you like this video, please subscribe. I post new videos every Friday. Thank you for watching. Bye.